What is up, freaks? Welcome back to the latest installment of the TFTC Guide Series. Today we will be going through how to install Graphene OS on a Pixel 3a. Graphene OS is a privacy-focused fork of Android that doesn't have any Google services included in it by default. Um, a couple disclaimers here. Uh, it is possible to break your phone if you screw this up, so please take that into account. Um, and also, uh, it will wipe your phone when we unlock the bootloader. That's a security mechanism. The idea is that if you unlock the bootloader, uh, you can install other software on the phone, and um, the phone is designed so that it wipes in that situation. So make sure you back up your phone um, and make sure you you know, you follow the steps accordingly and and take precautions there in terms of breaking your phone. So here we have a um, brand new Pixel 3a out of the box. Uh, we're going to start it up. I'm connecting to Wi-Fi right now. I don't want you to see my Wi-Fi password, which is why it's off the screen. Um, during this setup process, we want to make sure that we, we don't give Google any information that we don't have to give them. So. We're not going to give them a Google account. We're not going to give them our cell phone number. We're not going to give them anything like that. So you don't have your SIM card in yet. Um, we're connected to Wi-Fi, and we're going to check for updates. It's important that the phone is fully up to date before uh, we do this process. So we're going to select don't copy. As I said before, I'm not going to give them email or phone number. I'm going to skip this Google account process. Uncheck all these. Bogus pin. Just don't forget it. Skip the fingerprint. Don't install any of these apps. Great. We're in. Now we go to settings. Um, we're going to double check to make sure that the phone is fully up to date. So I'm going to go to the search bar to do it since they bury it now. Let's click check for update just to make sure. Great. Now we're going to enable developer options. So you're going to want to go down to about phone. Uh, and we have to click the build number a bunch of times. See on the bottom, just keep clicking it. And then we enter that pin that we picked before. Developer options. Then we want two things enabled, that OEM unlocking, which I already have enabled up there, and USB debugging. Enable both of those things. So while we wait here, just, okay, so now we're going to turn off the phone, I'll hold the power button, turn off the phone. And we will be doing this with a fresh install of Ubuntu Linux, uh, which you can install on any computer. Um, if you go to Ubuntu's uh, website, they uh, you can flash Linux onto a USB drive and run it on any computer. Um, I should have a guide up shortly about that, but there's, there's plenty of guides, including on Ubuntu site, on how to do that. So now we're on Graphene OS's install page. We need to install the latest version of the Android SDK. The reason for that is because we need something called Fastboot. So we're extracting here, extract that zip file that we just downloaded. Keep in mind, Fastboot, see Fastboot right there, is included on in most Linux di distros to begin with, but you need the newest one, which is why we're downloading platform tools directly from Google. So make sure you don't use the older version of Fastboot. You got to download it from platform tools. So now we go into terminal. We're going to 
We're going to get fast boot ready for flashing our device. You can copy these commands directly as you see them on the screen, and I will have them in the show notes underneath um, if you want to follow along there instead. So right now we're moving fast, fast boot over to our user folder. This is the, the move command in terminal. And we're going to enter our computer password because it's a super user command. That's what sudo means. And we're going to check our fast boot version number. See 29.0.6. And you go here, and it needs to be 29.0.6 or above if you see this guide later. So now we want to go into uh, fast boot mode. So you're going to hold the, the down volume button while clicking the power button when the phone is off. We'll plug it into our Linux computer. Getting the actual key combination right can be a little bit of a pain in the ass. Sometimes it just registers as the power button, as you see here. Uh, and in that case, we have to wait uh, for the phone to load up and then turn it back off and try again. So that's what I'm doing. And we'll give it a second try. There we go. Now we're in fast boot mode. You see device state locked. So the next step is we're going to unlock the bootloader. When we do this, as I said before, it is going to wipe the phone. So make sure it's fully backed up if you have anything on it. Super user command, fast boot flashing unlock. And now the phone registers that and we have to approve it on the phone. You press the volume button to, to switch to unlock the bootloader and then you click the power button to select it. And now the bootloader is unlocked. So now we will proceed to downloading the latest version of Graphene for this device and flashing it onto the phone. On the Graphene OS install page, you will see the releases link right here. And now you want to pick the release specific to your phone. So in this case, it's a Pixel 3a, which, by the way, is now under $300 on Amazon and other websites. So check that out. Seems like a pretty good deal to me. Decent hardware. The main negative being Google services, but we're getting rid of that right now. So now we're going to wait for the download to, to finish. While we wait here, I mean, it's important to realize why are we doing this in the first place. The reason we're doing this is because we see governments around the world increasing their surveillance capabilities. Um, they are leveraging partnerships with Google and Apple and other big tech companies to execute those surveillance strategies. Uh, and it's more important than ever that we're using open source software that takes our privacy seriously uh, to make it as difficult as possible for them. Keep in mind that even though we're removing all the Google services and whatnot, um, they can still track you using your SIM card and cell phone triangulation, tri triangulation. So basically they have three cell towers and they see where you are in between them to figure out a idea of a location. So there's two ways to try and mitigate that issue. One is to, to not ever put a SIM card in the device which isn't really practical for many, but you could use it with Wi-Fi. And the second thing is to basically have prepaid SIM cards that aren't necessarily connected to your identity and to rotate them 
um, to try and mitigate that issue of the, of the cell phone towers. One step I am skipping in this to make it as simple as possible for people is the actual verification of this download file. If you go to that install page on Graphene's uh, website, you can see the process for verifying the download. You can also verify the download after the fact. If you know someone or have a second device that has Graphene on it, there's an app on it called the Auditor app, and one phone can check the other phone. Okay, now we have the, the, the image for Graphene on the Pixel 3a. We're gonna extract that just like we did with platform tools. It's gonna be in our download file, download folder. This is our target. We're gonna just look in it, just check. Now we're gonna to navigate to that folder If you press tab after typing in the first few letters, it auto fills in. That's what I did there. Now LS shows you what's in the folder. I just like doing that to see what's in here. This, I actually messed up. I'm about to X out of the terminal and do it again. You wanna put the super user command before that, sudo. So I'm gonna X out. I'll show you the proper command in a second. Open terminal again. Navigate back to that folder. It's that flash dash all dot sh that we want to run. So sudo dot slash flash dash all dot sh. And this is going to flash the latest version of graphene onto the phone. Don't touch the phone at this point. If you can, as you see in the bottom right, uh, the phone is going through its paces. It's going to reboot a couple times here, black out the screen. Just don't touch it, let it run. And Google provides uh, images for all their stock Android as well. So if, if you ever want to go back, this is the similar way you go. But instead of flashing uh, the graphene image, you would flash the image that's available on Google's website. Great, and now it's done. So we have Graphene installed. We need to reboot the device. If you go over to your phone, which I'm about to do, uh, 
on the top there is, it says reboot system now. So you're going to press the power button to do it. And we wait a second here. Google's warning you, phone's warning you that the bootloader is still unlocked. As I said before, when the bootloader is unlocked, anyone can install software on your phone through that same process we just did. And we have graphene. It's installed. We got it. We did it, guys. Well done. That wasn't too difficult. So our next step is we're going to let this boot up, and then we are going to go back, and we're going to lock that bootloader so that if anyone wants to install different software on the phone going forward, they will have to wipe it by unlocking the bootloader. It's important to have that security mechanism re-enabled. There we go, we got graphene. If you're familiar with Android, you'll you'll notice that it's it's very, very similar. Um, it is Android. It's a fork of Android. It just doesn't have any of the Google services that uh, have a tendency to spy on you. So now we're going to turn off the phone. Got to lock that bootloader. As I said earlier, that button combination is a little bit tricky, so I messed it up again. So now it's going to boot into graphene, and then we got to turn it off and try again. It's that same button press, you know, down on the volume button and the power button. Third time's the charm on this one. Uh, it's worth noting that it needs to be an unlocked pixel. Um, so if you buy it direct from Google or on Amazon or something like that, most of them are unlocked. You got to make sure it is. Um, I believe the Verizon branded one doesn't work. Uh, I think that's the only one that isn't unlocked, but I'm not positive. Um, in general, you shouldn't buy carrier branded phones. I don't like buying carrier branded phones. So just buy it direct from Google or on Amazon unlocked. Make sure it's not Verizon branded. By the time I finished recording this video, I realized the trick is you want to basically hold down the the volume down button before you click the power button is the easiest way to do it. Finally, there we go. Back Back to the fast boot mode. So now let's lock this bootloader back to terminal. Pseudo flashing, pseudo fast boot flashing lock. Easy peasy. Put in your password for your phone, uh, for your computer. And now your phone wants to make sure that you do want to lock the bootloader. So you're going to press the volume button and then the power button to confirm. Bang, bang. And now you have the Pixel 3a running the privacy-focused graphene OS. Um, and you're good to go. Customize the phone the way you want to customize it. Put in a SIM card if you intend to use it with a SIM card. Remember what I said earlier about cell phone triangulation. Um, consider using a prepaid SIM that's not connected to your identity. Hope you found this guide useful. I have a lot more guides coming. And I hope you find those useful as well. If you want to track them, you can subscribe. If you want to listen to our podcast, just search Tales from the Crypt on your favorite podcast app. Our website's tftc.io. And our short link for our YouTube channel is tftc.tv. My name is Matt O'Dell. Make me proud. De-Google your phone. Don't trust Apple. And let's do this thing. Stay humble. Stack sacks.